True inflation data is to believe, and those of you who follow the channel know that they did a big data ad about two months ago, three months ago, which completely changed their numbers by almost a full percentage point. So I've been a little cautiously optimistic that they're getting it right now. But if they are to be believed, the promise of deflation in 2024 has gotten a fresh evidence over just the past week. Trueflation has dropped from just over 3% where it had been up and down around that number from October to December 10, and now it has dropped to just 2.32 as of today. And that entire drop has taken place between December 10 and today. That drop has come almost 100% from food, drink, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, tobacco, personal items, and clothing. And these are the very products that Costco and Walmart CEOs would have been noticing over a month ago when they said deflation is coming. Generally, suppliers to those kind of companies, the mass marketers like that, and they're two of the biggest, are required to give them pricing for an entire year. So they're going to be quite good at predicting pricing a full year out. If, defl if deflation comes from a further reduction in the crazy cost issues of the pandemic, where prices rose rapidly and are now falling back to something closer to normal, this will not be a negative for the economy at all. For deflation to be a negative, it must stem from a lack of demand. I believe this deflation is coming from competitive pressures on companies like Walmart and Costco, whose costs have dropped, and from their suppliers. Buyers are aware of how the buyers at these companies, okay, are really totally aware of what's happening with raw materials, shipping costs, labor, and how they've dropped, not labor, but the others have dropped, and they will be putting pressure on the salespeople to drop the pricing. Believe me, when I have walked into Target or Walmart each year end, the basic assumption is always that we have something to give. But in this environment, the buyers and the buying committees are under tremendous pressure, putting tremendous pressure. They're getting pressure from the C-suite to hammer suppliers for much lower pricing. Larry and I will discuss this more in a video tomorrow around the new hour that you do not want to miss. And I'm very confident that it'll be a huge part of the discussion when Kathy Woods reports on Friday night, seeing this kind of drop in the trueflation numbers, I'm sure it'll come up. All right. So this is Randy Kirk. By the way, the $3 Patreon pricing seems to be hugely popular. Two more people today after one yesterday joining up at the $3 level. Um, on the other hand, so you want to do that, join at the Patreon level. On the other hand, don't forget, <laughs> it's time that you're down to, uh, what is it now? It's five o'clock, uh, seven hours, give or take, uh, to, to, to purchase these at $20 a piece, no matter how many you buy. So you're going to save a little money there. But if you're buying one, remember that's still 25. Now, quite a number of people have taken advantage of the opportunity to buy over the last 24 hours, but we're down to seven. So put your order in right now. Again, let me tell you, I'm very impressed with the number of people that are reordering. In fact, I think two of the last three orders that I received have been reorders. Um, okay. Um, also, most of you know that I started this discussion about a Tesla technological convergence. Well, Brian and I, Brian White and I, kicked that idea around in a video earlier today. You are probably going to want to go back and look into that. He was able to add excellent ideas to my basic analysis. I'll put a card up later. We are ready for the envelope. Which envelope is that? Oh, yeah, that envelope tomorrow morning. I'm hoping in my show in the morning, I'll be able to report Tesla's sales numbers. Not sure exactly what time they're going to come up, come out, but usually before market opens. So I'm going to be able to let you know what happens on the Q4 and the full year. It's a pretty small range of opinion this time and not a lot of fuss about it. Not a lot of people saying, oh yeah, this is what it's going to be. It's kind of muted. Most are saying the number will be somewhere right around street consensus of 480,000 483. That will be enough to get over the 1.8 million. Troy Teslike came in and he's posting today on X. He says that his estimate is 479. 
There are almost no estimates that are lower than 480 or lower than enough to get it to the full, uh, uh, what I just say, 480,000 for, I mean, sorry, 1.8 million for the, for the year. Um, and there are some that are quite a bit higher. Some people are close to or even above 500,000 for the quarter. So there's also, well, anyway, we'll report on that in the morning. There's a Tesla video out from Tony Tong at his, his, uh, his handle is GoPro AI. Um, he says, V12 is finally here. Now, no one seems to know if his information is fake or not, or how he could have gotten V12. People are saying, well, maybe his spouse or somebody, his family is, is, a, is an employee. Anyway, to the extent that this is real, the information was not even actually that hugely helpful. He did say that it's way, way more human-like. You don't really notice the robotic aspect of the, of the product at all. Seems to make better decisions. He even gave an example of how he was in the fast lane on a two-lane highway. Somebody came up behind him rapidly. The car changed lanes and then allowed the guy to go past and then changed lanes back into the fast lane again. Uh, he talked about going over speed bumps really, really nicely. He talked about uh, the continuation of the problem at stop signs, but we know that's going to continue to be because Nishta's face forcing it to take a full stop at stop signs. Um, but, you know, I, he didn't talk about the big ones that I keep asking about, but really congested pedestrian areas, like during rush hour in some downtown areas. And the other one is parking lots. In fact, my new favorite, would be what does it what is the bot going to do what is the optimus <laughs> fsd car going to do in a parking lot where there are no immediate spots available and that the only way you're going to get a place is if you stand in line behind others waiting for a spot to come available how will it respond to that will it be able to tell that there's brake lights that are backing up two and three down so that there's two spots. I mean, how's it going to do all that? That's another one I want to see in action. Well, we could see Tesla stock realign its U.S. matrix as soon as this week. I'm sorry, that's not Tesla stock. That was how Gary Black put it. This is from Gary Black. I forgot to mention that. He's saying we could see Tesla realign its, realign its U.S. pricing matrix on the Model 3s and Model Ys in terms of the different uh, form factors as soon as this week in order to fit, fix the distortions caused by losing the $7,500 EV credit on the Model 3 rear, rear wheel drive and the Model 3 long range. That left, uh, if it's left unchanged, it would mean the Model 3 rear wheel drive and the long range are priced above respective real wheel, rear wheel drive. That's so hard to say. And long range trims. And the Model 3 uh, would be price, the, the uh, 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 yeah, the Model 3 um, performance would be priced below the Model 3 long range. So he says this all makes no sense. His uninformed guess, he says, would be that Tesla price reductions, $4,500 on the Model 3 rear wheel drive and the long range offset by $1,500 to $2,000 price increases on the Model 3 performance and the Model Y and all Model Y trims. This will be roughly revenue ne neutral and realign the US pricing matrix as it was before January 1. I believe Tesla will, he says, I believe Tesla will ultimately find a way to recapture at least half of that $7,500 EV credit lost on the, on the Model 3 real wheel drive and long range with 4680 batteries downstream as they become more available as the ramp goes up. I've taken a different position. My position is they're going to leave it alone. Well, they may make some of the changes he said in his first part, but generally speaking, I think the changes are going to come when the Highland becomes available in March. That's when you're going to see probably whether it's uh, Panasonic, uh, uh, you know, coming out of Reno, or whether it's 4680s, one way or another, they're going to fix this in March when the Highland comes out. By the way, that rumor continues to be, get, become stronger and stronger with more and more people saying that it's a done deal, but we will see. Um, Troy Teslike says, what does Troy Teslike say? I might have already given you that. Never mind. Okay. So 
what's happening this week in the stock market in terms of new reports that are coming out this week. Well, tomorrow, which I won't be able to report until tomorrow night, and that is... Uh, that will be with um, uh, yeah that it will be with Nicholas Gibbs on Tuesday night. So we will be able to talk about the S and P final U S manufacturing PMI. What are the purchasing managers saying about future manufacturing uh, production coming up? What are they seeing? Then we'll also have construction spending. Uh, the street is believing construction spending will stay about flat. I don't know why they would think it would be flat unless the housing folks have not been able to get their, in other words, whether that information is not being reflected yet. Because we saw last week where uh, housing starts and housing permits were both up. Uh, so maybe the construction spending won't be showing up quite yet. Um, on the PMI, on the S&P manufacturing PMI, uh, they're saying, I think they're saying that it's going to not change from the 48.2 that it registered last time. We have, of course, the beginning of the Fed presidents and those kind of guys speaking again. We know how much fun they have destroying the market. Anyway, we'll have one of those uh, several, well, several of those speaking this week. So then we get to Wednesday. Wednesday is when the real fun starts. We have U.S. job openings on Wednesday, that won't be able to be reported until Wednesday night uh, when uh, uh, with <laughs> Jeff Lutz will be helping me on that one. Um, the street is believing that's the job openings are actually going to increase a little bit from 8.7 to 8.8 .8 million. Um, as long as it's around that number, I don't think the street's going to care. They might like to see it drop a bit, not because they want the economy to get softer, but the number is still so out of whack with the number of people that are seeking jobs. So getting closer to a one-on-one -on -one where the, historically, it's the other way around. So it might be nice to see to where there are more people looking for jobs than there are jobs available. That still wouldn't be recessionary. That would be normal. Anyway, we also have the ISM manufacturing numbers coming in on Wednesday. Uh, that is expected to pop up a little bit. And that's exactly what I've been saying is that I see manufacturing. I mentioned that in this morning's video. I see manufacturing increasing and improving after 19 months of being down. I see that going up because there's just a limit to how much the inventories of wholesalers and retailers can go down. Um, then we have the minutes of the December meeting coming out at 2 o'clock after, uh, Wednesday afternoon. That's always interesting to see the details. Um, not looking for much uh, unexpected in that. Um, we also have auto sales coming out uh, on Wednesday. And that was last month. It was 15.8 million. Um, the street has not either. They haven't asked people for their opinion on that or they haven't they haven't given it. One of the two, because it's showing right now at even uh, or not at all. No, you know, no opinion. So I'm not sure which way autos will go. I have no no special uh, understanding or, or research that I've done on that. Okay, here comes the first big numbers. Thursday, ADP employment. We will have that on Thursday morning for you because it comes out before the market opens. Um, and uh, again, nothing from the, the usually they, they go out and poll folks to get their opinion on this number. Um, last month, we had 103,000 uh, additional jobs. We had, a, uh, uh, and this month, they're not giving us any idea of what's expected there. Initial jobless claims um, last week, last month was 218,000. Again, no, no guess here. I'm very shocked. Um, and then S&P final U.S. services won't be able to report that till Thursday night uh, with help from Bradford Ferguson. Um, and again, no, 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 uh, nothing, no supposed number from the street or from the uh, economists that they poll. All right, then the big numbers, of course, the employment report on Friday uh, was 199,000 last month in terms of increases. This month, expecting only 170,000. That would still be fine. That would be kind of a Goldilocks number. Um, and then unemployment rate expected to go up 0.1%. Again, that would be possibly due to more or less people that they think will be uh, joining the work workforce and so in that case, it would suggest more people coming into the workforce. Hourly wages expected to drop from 0.4 to 0.3. That would be very strong in terms of the Fed's hopes and dreams. 
Um, and then hourly wages year over year, again, no guess. Last month, it was 4%. I think the Fed's fine with 4%. They'd rather see it around 3%. Then we have um, ISM services, which we won't be able to report till Friday night. And I'll be doing that alone this Friday night. Larry Goldberg will not be joining me on Good News Friday because he'll be joining me on Saturday morning to help me take a look at Kathy Wood's report about all of this and way, way more. Should be an absolutely fascinating week to hear from Kathy. I just can't wait for this one. All right. And so ISM services expected to be uh, down just a tad, 52.5 versus 52.7, and factory orders going way up from negative 3.6 to a positive 2.6. I think that is, again, an evidence of what we're I'm thinking is going to happen with manufacturing, which is really going to help the economy in 2024. All right. Then we have this from Stock MKT News. Stock MKT News. Anyway. Wedbush just said that it believes tech stocks will be up 25% in 2024 with a NASDAQ 20,000 level in its bull case scenario. Well, that suggests it's going to be a heck of a good year. All right, where are the numbers now? Let me get the computer over here, the phone, whatever, and let's take a look. All right, we have got the 10-year coming in right now at up two basis points. But that is still only a 3.881. Um, I'm expecting that to start tailing off again. I think, well, 3.9 is probably a kind of a, a, a stopping point, if you will. Um, and I may be trading in this range for a while of 3.77 to 3.9. That seems to be a, a range that's being established. We have the rest of all of the entire list, including... The short-termers are up strongly. The two-month is up nine basis points. The one-month is up seven, 70. What? That can't be right. Something's wrong with the uh, with the one-month. That's got to be a, a mistake. It's up 72 basis points. So there's some, it's up at 6.128. Buy some of that. <laughs> That's a, that is that is investment advice. If it's really up 72 basis points right now, that's a buy. Okay, let's see. But in general, everything in the bonds is higher yields, that meaning uh, downward uh, pricing on those. We have got oil up just a, about 0.46% at 71.98. That is still in that trading range. Um, 74 seems to be kind of a top that it's not going above. And uh, 67, 68 seems to be the bottom. Natural gas up strongly again today. It was off Friday. It's very volatile right now. If you like, if you like volatility right now, natural gas seems to be the one you should playing, be playing. And it looks like the Brent is closing the gap. We're down to five dollars difference between the two. It was as high as six. Uh, that would suggest that Red Sea problems are coming under a little more control. We did see the U.S. fleet. Uh, 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 destroying three uh, boats this morning, three of the Hutu uh, boats, attack boats this morning. And we've also seen uh, a helicopter from the Houthis uh, taking on one of our, one of our U.S. Uh, naval uh, boats or ships. Not sure how that all worked out. I tried to find out, but I couldn't find it. Okay. We've got the dollar uh, pretty steady. We've got the the Bitcoin up 6% right now at 45,000. Wow. Okay. That's that might, I'm not sure because I don't follow this as closely. I think that might be a new recent high. 45,193. Interesting. Uh, we've got the Dow barely up 0.03. The SP barely down 0.01. The NASDAQ barely up 0.02%. Those are percents. Um, yeah. So I would call all of that. Pretty much flat. Um, all right, let's see. So let me just say one more time. You, This convergence thing, I believe, is very important. Larry Goldberg and I are doing that thing tomorrow. You want to see that. Larry is seeing the convergence also, and he saw it from a different angle as he was uh, uh, preparing what we talk about tomorrow. He, he didn't even think about it in terms of convergence. But when I pointed out to him, he's like, oh, okay. And then Brian and I, we talked about the convergence. You'll see he added tremendous amounts of content to what I've been saying. I think this convergence is real. I think it's huge. 
I think that the market is going to understand it by mid-year or into the third quarter, and it's going to have an impact on stocks like no tomorrow. It's going to be unbelievable, and everybody's numbers are going to be completely wrong. Even my 700 by year end is going to be low. That is not investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor. But you want to hear what Brian had to say from earlier today, I'll put a card right here on that one. One more reminder, you want to get in on this deal before the deal goes away in a couple of hours. I mean, the, the regular deal is fine, and I'm sure you'll be okay paying an, a, a few extra dollars starting tomorrow. And then um, join Patreon. Now you have availability at $3, $5, and 10 Obviously, I'd love to have you at the 5 or $10 level, but if three bucks, uh, people were saying, hey, I, I'd like to spend, you know, 50 or or $100 a year total between all of you guys. And, you know, if you're charging five or 10, that's less that I can give to other people. Could you give us a little lower price point? I said, hey, I can do that. So three bucks is the new number. All of that information is down below in the description. So uh, please uh, hit, the, hit that link, go over to Patreon and let's get going. Love to have you on the team as one of the producers of the show. By the way, I took a look at uh, my numbers that I need to beat for the first quarter, I think it's going to be pretty easy for me to double January through March. And then it gets a little tougher in April. So anything you can do to help me build up the momentum so that when we get to April, May, and June, I can double the numbers from last year. That would be a great help. Uh, thank you so much for all you do. Hit the like and subscribe. You know what that does. Add the comments, listen to the videos all the way through, or at least most of the way through, not like three to five, seven minutes. That hurts my algorithm. If you listen longer than seven or eight minutes, that really helps the algorithm. Anyway, um, I think that's enough. It's been great talking to you on this first day of the new year. I'm looking forward to the first trading day of the new year tomorrow. Come on back and see me in the morning. It's Randy Kirk. It's been great talking to you.